subscribe ecofan for more educational videos thank you back to our channel today we are diving into a critical topic environmental flow have you ever wondered what happens to our rivers and ecosystems when we alter their natural flow stick around to find out don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos on environmental topics let's get started now the question arises what is environmental flow environmental flow refers to the amount of water that should naturally flow down a river to sustain its ecological health it is crucial for supporting aquatic life maintaining biodiversity and ensuring a balanced ecosystem importance of environmental flow it's because it provides essential habitats for various species supports migration patterns and maintains the river's natural characteristics without proper flow the health of our rivers and the communities that depend on them are at risk the importance of environmental flow is increasingly recognized by governments and water managers around the world there are number of international agreements that recognize the importance of environmental flow including the convention on the law of non navigational uses of international water courses and the convention on biodiversity in recent years there has been a growing movement to protect and restore environmental flow in rivers and streams around the world this movement is driven by a growing understanding of importance of environmental flow for healthy river ecosystems and the benefits that they provide to people balancing human needs and river health balancing human needs and river health is a complex challenge rivers provide us with many essential services including drinking water irrigation transportation recreation and biodiversity however our activities are also having a significant impact on our health river health and some of the major threats to river health include like pollution this comes from a variety of sources including including agricultural runoff industrial wastes and sewage pollution can degrade water quality harm aquatic life and make rivers unsafe for recreation second one is dams and other water diversions these structures can alter the natural flow of rivers which can disrupt fish migration sediment transport and other important ecological processes or fishing can deplete fish population which can have a cascading effect on other river ecosystems and lastly invasive species that can outcome of native species for food and habitat and they can also transmit diseases there are number of things that can be done to balance human needs and rivers i mean river health first one is conservation this involves reducing our water consumption improving water efficiency and recycling water second one is restoration this can include removing dam restoration natural flow regimes and replanting riparian vegetation and educating people to understand the importance of healthy rivers and how they can help to protect them now 
the impact of dams on environmental flow. Dams have a significant impact on environmental flow, which is the amount of water that is allowed to flow through a river or stream in a natural way. Dams can alter the flow in number of ways, including reducing the amount of water that flows downstream. Dams, dams can store water for later use, which reduces the amount of water that is available to flow downstream. This can have a number of negative impacts on river ecosystem, including decreasing fish population. Then fish population needs a certain amount of water to migrate, spawn and find the food. When the amount of water, I mean, flowing downstream is reduced, fish population can decline. Second one is changing the distribution of sediments. Sediment is important for river ecosystem because, because it provides habitat for fish and other organisms. When the amount of sediment flowing uh, downstream is reduced, it can change the distribution of sediment in the river, which can have a negative impact on river and ecosystems. Then altering the water temperatures. Dams can trap heat, which can lead to an increase in water temperature downstream. This can be a problem for fish and other aquatic organisms that are sensitive to temperature. And second one is changing timing of water release. Dams can release water at a different times of the year than would naturally occur. This can disrupt the natural flow regime of a water, which can have a negative impact on a river ecosystem. Then lastly, blocking the fish migration. Dams can block fish migration, which prevents fish from accessing spawn grounds on other important habitats. This can have a significant impact on fish population. There are a number of ways to mitigate the negative impacts of dams on environmental flow. So restoration natural flow regimes, this can involve removing dams or modifying dam to allow more water to flow downstream. Then providing fish passage, this is also called a fish ladder, can involve construction of fish leaders or other structures that allow fish to pass over or around dams. Then management of sediment, this can allow releasing sediments from reservoirs or other water bodies to maintain the natural distribution of sediments in a river. Then protecting riparian vegetation, Riparian vegetation helps to stabilize riverbanks and filter water, which can help to mitigate the negative impacts of dams on environmental flow. The question arises, the restoration of environmental flow. As we know earlier, I have told you the environmental flow is the amount of water that flow in a river natural ways. It is important for maintaining healthy river ecosystem as it provides habitat for fishes and other eco aquatic ecosystem that I have discussed. But there are some put, uh, points uh, that uh, will be discussed. How can we restore the environmental flow? In that case, first one is the reducing water withdrawals. This can be done by improving water efficiency using water conservation measures and reducing the amount of water used for irrigation second one is restoring wetlands wetland help to restore water and release it slowly which can help to maintain natural flow regimes then removing dams dams can block fish migration and reduce the amount of water that flows downstream 
Removing dams can help restoration of natural water regimes and improve fish population. Or modifying the dams, it can be modified to allow more water to flow downstream. This can be done by raising the height of dams, increasing the width of spillways or installation of fish leaders and maintaining sediment Sediment can be managed to maintain the natural flow distribution of sediment in a river. This can be done by releasing sediment from reservoirs or other water bodies or by planting trees and shrubs along the river banks. Restoring environmental flow is an important step. Restoring environmental flow is an important step by protecting water ecosystem. By taking these steps, we can help to ensure the rivers continue to provide the many benefits that they offer, such as cleaning drinking water, habitat for fishes and other wildlife, and opportunities for recreation. Some of the benefits for restoring environmental flow are Im improved fish population, need for a certain amount of water to migrate and spawn and find food. When environmental flow is restored, fish population can be rebound. Increased biodiversity, a healthy river ecosystem supports a wide variety of plants and animals. When environmental flow is restored, biodiversity can increase and then what improved water quality. Environmental flows helps to flush out pollutants and keep water clean. Reduced flow like environmental flow helps to regulate water levels which can reduce the risk of flooding and improved recreation. People enjoy swimming, fishing, boating and rivers. Uh, when environmental flow is restored, these activities can be more enjoyable. Now the question is how environmental flow can be related to the climate change. Climate change is already having a significant impact on environmental flow and this impact is expected to increase in the future. Climate change is causing changes in precipitation patterns, snow melting time and evapotranspiration rates and all which can have an impact on river flows. Some of the specific impacts of climate change on environmental flows include reduced river flows in some areas climate change is causing river flow to decrease this is due to a combination of factors including increased evaporation rates decreased snow melt and change in precipitation patterns second one is more variable river flows climate change is also causing river flows to become more variable this means that there will be more extreme high and low flows which can make it difficult to maintain healthy river ecosystem and changes in the timing of the river flows like climate change is also causing changes in timing of river flows this means that river may flood at different times of the year which can disrupt fish migration and other important ecological processes. These changes in environmental flow are having a negative impact on river ecosystem. Fish population are declining and some species are even becoming extinct. Wetlands are drying up and water quality is declining. These impacts are already being felt and they are expected to get worse in the future. There are a number of things that can be done to address the impacts of climate change on environmental flow. First one is restoration of wetlands. The wetlands help to store water and release it slowly which can help to maintain natural flow regimes. Second one is reduced water withdrawals. And this can be done by improving water efficiency using water conservation measures and reducing the amount of water used for irrigation. Then modifying dams. Dams can be modified to allow more water to flow downstream. This can be done by raising the height of dams, increasing the width of spillways or installing fish leaders. Managing sediment. Sediment can be managed to maintain natural distribution of sediments in a river. This can be done by releasing sediment from reservoirs or other water bodies or by planting trees and shrubs along the river banks. An important uh, relation of environmental flow with agriculture. 
as we know agriculture is a major water user and it can have a significant impact on environmental flow irrigation for example can reduce amount of water that flows downstream which can have a negative impact on river ecosystem and there are a number of ways to manage environmental flow and agriculture in a sustainable way or both some of the ways by which we can manage the environmental flow in agriculture practices are restor restoring wetlands helps to restore water and release it slowly which can help to maintain natural flow regime that this can benefit both agriculture and environment and using water conservation measures there are a number of ways to conserve water in agriculture such as using drip irrigation or planting more drought or tolerant crops this can help to reduce the amount of water that is withdrawn from rivers or streams which can benefit the environment then managing sediment sediment can be managed at, as we have discussed early there are sediment distribution and can benefit both agriculture and environment for example sediment can be used uh, to fertilize crops and it can also help to stabilize river banks and protecting riparian vegetation uh, that can stabilize river banks to filter water and can help to mitigate the negative impacts of air i mean agriculture on environmental flow by taking these steps we can help to manage environmental flow and agriculture in a way that is sustainable for both this will ensure that we can contribute to enjoy benefits of both agriculture and healthy river ecosystems for future generations some of the benefits of managing environmental flow and in agriculture in a sustainable way are like improved fish population as we have discussed in earlier slides how can it be improved uh, by i mean managing the environmental flow and second one is the increased biodiversity a healthy river ecosystem supports a wide variety of plants and animals when it uh, i mean environmental flow and agriculture are managed in a sustainable way definitely their biodiversity will increase then improved water quality environmental flow helps to flush out pollutants also that clean the wastewater and managing the ecosystem sustainably and we can use the uh, wastewater for irrigation also Re reduce flooding environmental help uh, flow helps to regulate regulate the water flow then improved recreation people can enjoy swimming fishing and boating in rivers then environmental flow and agriculture are maintained in a sustainable way now the point is how environmental flow and urbanization can be connected urbanization is a process of converting rural land into urban land and it is one of the most significant drivers of environmental change as cities grow they consume they consume more water produce more population pollution and change the hydrology of surrounding wet uh, watersheds these changes have significant impact on environmental flow which is amount of water as we know that naturally flows through a river or streams and there are a number of ways that urbanization can impact the environmental flow the first one is the increased water demand as cities grow they require more water for drinking sanitation and industrial use this can lead to increased withdrawals from the rivers and streams which can reduce environmental flow then second one is increased pollution urban areas produce a lot of pollution including sewage industrial waste and storm water runoff this pollution can contaminate river streams making them less suitable for fish and other aquatic life then change in hydrology urbanization can change the hydrology of watershed including the amount of water that is available the timing of flow and the distribution of sediments these changes can have a negative impact on river ecosystem the impacts of urbanization on environmental flow can be significant and they can have cascading effect on river ecosystems for example reduced environmental flow can lead to decreased fish population and can lead to change in food web 
these changes make river less resilient to disturbance such as climate change or uh, pollution and there are a number of things that can be done to mitigate these impacts uh, like urbanization or environmental flow for example we can go for the conservation of the water like for the irrigation uh, using drought tolerant crops then reducing the pollution using the waste treatment plants and using the storm water management systems and industrial pollution control or we can protect our riparian areas i mean go for the borders uh, for the rivers and streams they can filter out the pollutants to the streams and these are the number of ways how can we control the pollution from the urbanization for successful environmental flow projects for example in australia a project called moray darling basin uh, is one of the important river systems in australia in uh, early 2000 the australian government implemented a series of environmental flow projects in the basin these projects have helped to improve the health of river system and they also supported the recovery of fish population and this is the map of the basin australia's moray darling basin the second important case study is the klamath river that is in california in 1990s the U.S. government implemented a series of environmental flow projects in the river. These projects have helped to improve the health of the river systems. And they also supported the recovery of salmon fish population. This is the basin. You can see this river is flowing from this and then discharged in the ocean. Third case study is from River Colorado river in united states and that is in 2000 century the u.s government implemented a series of environmental flow projects these projects have helped to improve the health of the river system and the, they have also supported the recovery of fish population and this is the picture of the basin and uh, these are just a few examples of successful environmental flow projects. There are many other projects around the world that are helping to protect the river ecosystems and ensure that they can continue to provide many benefits. One of the projects is the River Ganges uh, projects where government is extensively working in the restoration of the biodiversity and other aquatic life in the ecosystem, river ecosystem. And some of the key lessons that can be learned from these successful projects uh, is important importance of stakeholder agreements or engagements. And uh, I mean, each and every stakeholder should be uh, bring in the confidence for water use, conservation, and also the government agencies. Then there is a need for scientific research. Environmental flow projects should be based on sound scientific research. This can be uh, help to identify the specific needs of river ecosystem and can develop effective management strategies. The importance and of monitoring and evaluation environmental flow projects should be monitored and evaluated to ensure that they are effective. And this monitor monitoring can help to identify any problem with the project and make it necessary adjustments slide we will explore the role of technology in monitoring environmental flow as we know the technology plays a vital role in monitoring environmental flow there are a number of different technologies that can be used to monitor environmental flow include for example remote sensing like use of satellites drones to measure the water levels and flow rates and other parameters also the pollution levels can be monitored from the remote sensing then ground based sensors such as flow meters water quality monitors can also be used to collect the data in real time then modeling model can be used to stimulate the flow of water in river streams this can help to predict environmental flow change uh, that 
impact river ecosystem these technologies monitor or used to monitor environmental flow in a variety of settings including uh, rivers for example rivers are important i mean in uh, most important uh, surface water bodies so in another thing that streams there are smaller than the rivers but they are also important for the ecosystem they also support a quite different kind of the biodiversity and lakes there are still water bodies they have also a distinct uh, aquatic life and they also use for drinking water recreation and uh, environmental flow is also important uh, for the health of lakes and by using these technologies to monitor environmental flow we can help to ensure the river ecosystem and healthy and productive this is important for all people and environment so the point is how international cooperation or uh, can be used for environmental flow international cooperation uh, cooperation is an essential for managing environmental flow this is because rivers and streams often cross international borders and the impacts of environmental flow change can be felt in multiple countries and there are a number of international organizations that are working to promote international cooperation for environmental flow so the first one is the convention on law of non navigation on the uses of international water bodies so this convention sets out uh, the principles for equitable and reasonable uses of international waters then the international water management uh, institute this organization provides a technical assistant to the countries on water management issues including environmental flow then the world wide uh, world wildlife fund this organization works to promote to protect the world wildlife habitats including rivers and streams these organizations are working to promote international cooperation for environmental flow by fostering dialogue between the countries this helps to build a trust and understanding between the countries with it which is essential for cooperation sharing information and best practices this helps countries to learn each other and to improve their management of environmental flow providing technical assistance this helps countries to develop and implement environmental flow plans international cooperation for environmental flow is essential for protecting river ecosystems and ensuring that they continue to provide the many benefits that they offer by working together countries can ensure the environmental flow is managed in a way that benefits both people and environment and here is the list of some of the benefits of international cooperation for environmental flow like it helps to resolve the conflicts over the water resources there are lots of conflicts worldwide and also in india regarding the water sharing it can help to protect uh, shared water river ecosystem important because rivers and streams often cross international borders and impact of the environmental flow change can be felt in multiple countries and it can also help to promote sustainable water management practices this is important because water is a vital resource and we need to manage uh, it in the ways to ensure it is long term availability of recreational activities that are dependent on environmental flow these are fishing kayaking white water rafting canoeing swimming and bird watching all such activities are only possible when we have good environmental flow in this slide we will discuss the economic value of environmental flow so the economic value of environmental flow is the value of benefits that are provided by rivers and streams i mean that have advocate environmental flows and these economic benefits are like the recreation people enjoy swimming fishing boating and other recreational activities in rivers and streams then ecosystem services 
Rivers and streams provide a variety of ecosystem services such as flood control, water purification, and pollination. Biodiversity, rivers and streams support a wide variety of plants and animals. And then cultural heritage. Rivers and streams are often important cultural resources. The economic value of environmental flow can be difficult to quantify, but there are a number of methods that can be used to estimate. First one is market valuation. This method estimates the value of environmental flow by using the price of goods and services that are directly related to the environmental flow. And second one is cost benefit analysis. This method is, um, I mean, compares the cost of providing environmental flow with the benefits that are generated. And then is contingent valuation. This method asks people how much they would like to willing to pay for environmental flow. The economic value of environmental flow can be used to support uh, the case for managing rivers and river streams in a way that protects environmental flow. And this is important because water is a scarce resource and there are often competition for its use. By quantifying the economic value of environmental flow, we can help to ensure that it is given the consideration that it deserves. Some of the benefits uh, of quantifying economic value of environmental uh, I mean environmental flow is it can help to prioritize environmental flow management by knowing the value of environmental flow we can make better decisions about how to allocate water resources it can help to build public support for environmental flow management by showing the economic benefits of environmental flow we can help to convince people that it's worth investing in it can help to attract funds for environmental flow management by demonstrating economic value of environmental flow we can make it more attractive to donors and investors quantifying the economic value of environmental flow is a complex challenge but it is one of the that is worth pursuing by doing so we can help to ensure that rivers and streams are managed in a way that benefit both people and environment and uh, point nowadays that is how water scarcity can be linked to the environmental flow uh, before going to the connection let me explain water scarcity is a situation where there is not enough water to meet the needs of people or population or ecosystem it's growing pop problem as climate change is causing uh, I mean change in precipitation patterns and increased evaporation rates environmental flow and water scarcity are closely linked when water scarcity or scarcity occurs there is less water available for environmental flow this can have a significant negative impact on river ecosystem as it can lead to decrease fish population change in water quality and an increase in fish uh, I mean a risk of flooding and there are number of things that can be I mean done to address the challenge of environmental flow and water scarcity the first one is conserving water this can be done by using water efficient affluences, fixing leaks and planting drought tolerant landscaping then restoring wetlands wetlands help to restore wet um, store water release it slowly and then help maintain the natural flow which we have discussed earlier in earlier slides then managing dams also to modify the flow of water downstream so that the rivers have the enough kind of water to maintain their I mean various kind of activities then using water markets water markets allow water users to buy or sell the water rights this can help to ensure that water is used efficiently and that environmental flow is protected by taking these steps we can help to manage or mitigate the challenges of environmental flow and water scarcity and protect the river ecosystem for future generations how can we uh, engage the communities in environmental flow conservation so engaging the community in environmental flow management or conservation is essential for ensuring the that rivers and streams are managed in a way that benefits both people and environment so 
here are some uh, steps so by starting building relationship to get people to know about the community and understand their concern about the environmental flows that educate the community about the importance of environmental flow by explaining why environmental flow is important for the rivers and the benefits that it provides involve the community in decision making give the community a voice in decision making about the environmental flow and this will help to ensure that their concerns are heard and that they are invested in the process then celebrating the success sharing the success for environmental flow conservation with community and this helps to build up the momentum and encourage continued engagement some specific examples of how to engage the communities in environmental flow conservation are like hold community meetings then knowing them what is to be done what will be done how to restore all that kind of things then creating community education uh, campaigns like there should be the campaigns uh, providing education materials such as brochures websites organizing educational events and presentations then form a community group this could be a group of people who are interested in environmental flow or group of people who are affected by environmental flow then support local businesses this could be involve buying products from businesses that are committed to environmental flow conservation or supporting businesses that are located in area that are important for environmental flow then uh, by engaging communities in environmental flow conservation we can help to ensure rivers and streams are managed in a way that can benefit all the people that are connected to this here comes uh, the last slide that is what is the future of environmental flow the future of environmental flow is uncertain there are a number of trends that suggest that it it will become increasingly important in the years to come i mean the climate change is already having a significant impact on river flows and it is likely to continue in the future this means uh, there will be an increased need to manage environmental flows in order to protect river ecosystems then water scarcity water scarcity is a growing problem it is likely to put increased pressure on environmental flow this means that there will be a need to find ways to conserve water and ensure it is used efficiently then population growth population growth is putting increased pressures on water resources and this is likely to continue in the future this means there will be a need to find ways to manage water resources in a way that meets the needs of both people and the environment in this video we had covered so much about environmental flow remember it's our responsibility to protect our rivers and ecosystem for future generation let's work together to ensure a sustainable future if you found this series valuable don't forget to give it thumbs up and share it with your friends until next time stay environmentally conscious